usually show about video game development, but this one comes from actual game developers. We're going to take the big news from yesterday, we're gonna, or over the weekend since it's a Monday, and we're going to find out what story was the juiciest that we can dig our teeth into and you know just expand upon for a while. Yes, uh, if you are watching this on our live Twitch channel, you're probably watching on twitch.tv forward slash blue underscore chance. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're watching this somewhere else, you're probably watching on our youtube.com forward slash blue chance. Thank you for rewatching. If you are catching any of our other shows early, you're probably supporting us through our patreon.com forward slash blue chance or becoming a Twitch live subscriber. Uh, Twitch Prime will come to us any day now. So anybody that subscribes on that channel will be fantastic. I forgot the Twitch logo. Oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> Pulling up the comments. And uh, if you want to buy any of the shirts, we're not wearing any today because it's laundry day. <laughs> uh, you can find that on our merch store over at Blue Chance as well. Okay, that covers the basics. All right. So before we go into our next topic, uh, this is something we've been talking about for a while. Blizzard uh, co-founders leaving. High departures. High level departures are happening. Yeah. What is going on over there, right? So we're just going to shoot over here. Uh, a co-founder, an actual yeah, co-founder. Co one of the originals. One of the originals. There's like three or four originals, yeah. right? OGs that basically can just show to work and just exist <laughs> and get paid loads of money. And I'm sure he has a ton of equity and, and everything yeah. as he So OG that this person was there when the company was called Silicon Synapse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we'll go switch to Larry Camp. So you know the Blizzard history a little bit better than I do. Slightly. Slightly, but <laughs> uh, for some yeah, reason, yeah. Let, let's talk. Let's kind of over uh, overview, like for the people who um, who don't know anything about Blizzard, real quick, about what it means to you before we go into well, why yeah, Frank yeah. Pierce um, is such an important keystone. I'll say Blizzard Entertainment, and prior to them being Blizzard, Silicon Synapse has been part of the gaming fabric for something like twenty eight maybe 28, 29, 27 years, somewhere around there, I think. Uh, they definitely, and I might be overshooting that because I, I think the first games I remember from them were PC and Super Nintendo. Uh, PC stuff like, uh, you know, like obviously Warcraft 1. Um, that was the big one that I first got introduced to them, but, you know, they had on uh, Lost Vikings. Uh, Blackthorn actually played on Super Nintendo as well. Rock and Roll Racing is another game that, was Silicon Synapse, which eventually became Blizzard. But you have a team of ragtag, young, hungry developers starting their own company, making software. Then someone had the great idea to, you know, kind of take Warhammer and re-envision it as a PC game with their own story, with their own lore. And you have, you know, orcs versus humans. And uh, their derivative of, like, that type of fantasy was, I mean, the rest is history. Like, that's that was their, their footprint on the gaming fabric initially and then from that point on they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger bigger and bigger and bigger not yes. bitter. and this maybe bitter maybe, maybe bigger bitter. <laughs> uh but we are at a dipping point yeah. right uh last few years uh it feels like at least towards fans and uh, uh diablo having that um oh yeah i forgot about Diablo. yeah do you even have uh do you guys have phones incident yes. it was at the crest of when People were fearing that Activision's control was kind of overtaking Blizzard's creativity. Yeah. And so uh, shortly after that, a lot of departures along along the esports arena for that division. 800 people laid off last year. Yeah. Uh, shortly beginning of the year, a co-founder actually left as well, right? Yeah. So this is the second co-founder that left the company. I guess, and that's the telling thing to me, right? If I look at Blizzard's history as a company, regardless of how we feel like they may or may not have been spending funds or developing projects or how they were handling the business end, right? Mm -hmm. We had never seen in such a small window so many C-level or so many top-level executives essentially in exodus leaving the company, right? Even though it's Activision Blizzard now, mm -hmm. I still consider the people that I see leaving part of the Blizzard side. Yeah. And to say it was a Blizzard issue, I, I, I don't think you would see the frequency happening in such a small window, right? Yeah. And it definitely would have happened before the merger, I'm assuming. Yeah. And so I guess me as an outsider, I lead, I lead this to believe like maybe there's just uh, cultural differences or value differences in how Activision wants the Blizzard side of things to be running. And that may not be working with a lot of these C-level execs, especially if you've spent two, almost three decades you know, kind of in one philosophy, yeah. and then now being forced or mandated to like really start making these very tight, very abrupt changes to how you do things. Yeah. Being told that your way was wrong, yeah. things like that, I, I can see why 
now it's like, oh, well, Mike Morhaime is gone. He's leaving. You know, you have more people leaving. You have top level people, top men, who are leaving the company. And we keep seeing, you know, every six, seven, eight months, like another name, another name, another name. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot for a company that's been around for like 25 years, yeah. right? Um, so let's kind of look over this article and look at the details. Yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward with Greg Pierce being one of the three co founders. So there are three, so yeah. two have left so far. This looks to be the last guy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, being alone in there. I'm sure they still hang out. The announcement of Pierce's exit uh, comes less than a year after President Michael Morheim, uh, another political founder, left the company. And uh, the executive producer, World of Craft, oh, that's a huge title. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the time has come for me to step away from Blizzard and pass the torch to the next uh, Bobby Kotick of leaders. <laughs> Quick question for you, Brandon. Um, yeah. Just a chat comment says that your microphone makes you sound like an angry squirrel. It's very tame. angry squirrel. Uh, do you want to just push all the wires in just to be sure? Being being rude, maybe that's my voice. <laughs> Something about Brandon's voice. Is Something about my voice. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're good over here on the switchboard thing. So let's try it now. Okay. Uh, I'll just ask him. Let us know now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so why I was why I was bringing up the cadence and why I was bringing up the the window of you know why people might have been leaving for so so soon or, or so abruptly is it abru what I think the word I'm looking for is more like I guess the description of the word is the coincidence is a lot harder to call a coincidence because of the frequency being so common or in this very small window like we have no mass exodus for 27 years right. Activision Blizzard merger being the main new thing that has happened, and then now, in this in this last two year window, we're seeing like six, seven executives leaving. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm saying that coincidence is harder to call a coincidence, and it seems like it's more related to some sort of internal event. Yeah. And so even with his departure, because I read his words of like, hey, passing on the torch to the new generation. You know, very chummy, very back patting and supportive of what he's been able to do there, and then the hope that the company can continue to move forward. Yeah. Of course, that's how you're supposed to leave. Yeah. Like you always want to wish wish well. Um, but is do you think that there's anything hidden there? Like, why would you have, I would imagine, a smooth sailing job opportunity? If you're like the OG, you know what I mean? You're not going to, come on, they're not going to fire you. Yeah. You're not going to lose your job. You might get one of those creative, creative manager internal like hogwash titles just to keep you around and make sure that you get a salary just out of respect. A lot of companies actually still do those kinds of things. So I don't know. Do you think there's anything hidden there in regards to him being like, you know what? F this. My two, my two other homies are gone. Yeah. We're going to go start our own Netflix small game company together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, essentially they're not having fun anymore. Yeah. Right? I can see that. Yeah. No one stops showing up their, to their job because it's, uh, it's fun. It's because it's not fun anymore. These guys are well established within the industry, so they have reputation. They definitely have money, and so the only reasons for them to stick around this long for the last decade yeah. has been because creatively they're having an output that they yeah. feel like it's worth showing up for. Yeah. So I would imagine the last few years hasn't been that way. Mm -hmm. If creativity is being threatened, uh, then yeah, why am I here? You know. Um, I'm sure it was probably hurtful to kind of see them having to lay off 800 people uh, from their own company, right? I think when you build a company like that to such a high regard to yeah. gamers and game developers, you have a certain ego when it comes to uh, maintaining that. And uh, it hurts mm -hmm. to be known as the company that laid off so many people. Yeah after a record-breaking year uh, for the well, overall company. Yeah, Blizzard themselves have worse, been struggling, yeah. Now that you bring that up, yeah. if you go back to that record-setting year, yeah. what games contributed to that? If you, if you were to separate the Activision side from the Blizzard side, right, and say, like, here are the games that Blizzard brought to the table, here are the games that Activision brought to the table that contributed to a record year in sales, who do you think did most of the heavy lifting? Sorry, ask me again, because my mic keep it Oh, it's all right. Yeah. So... Bobby Kotick goes on to say, like, hey, record-setting year, yeah. all these billions that we've made. Yeah. If you look at product for product, the games that Activision brought to the table that year and then the games that Blizzard brought to the table that year, 
as far as who did most of the heavy lifting to make that revenue, where do you think that revenue side needle lands towards? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. And that's the side that cut 800 jobs. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, I mean, it's true. It like, Blizzard didn't have a good year. Um, they, 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 uh, they're all... <laughs> this, is the, this is the problem when you're looking at quarterly profits mm -hmm. is because you're not looking at the off and on year for games. Uh, for game developers, uh, whether they're making games or not, right? Blizzard is all about the long tail mm -hmm. plan, where there's a reason why they have like eight mega franchises under their belt, which is unprecedented for a developer. Mm -hmm. Like people wish to have that mm -hmm. uh, that many franchises to kind of pick and choose from. They they are fine for the rest of the century to just keep jumping back and forth on those franchises. They don't have to create a new IP ever. Mm -hmm. Right, <clears throat> but they still do, yeah. which is impressive. So, um, for them to have an off year after so many years of success and to kind of isolate that is, of course, unfair. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, look at that! Looks like the uh, the gravy train is done. <laughs> Time to change everything, and that's a, pretty much what last year and a half have been for Blizzard. It's like they blew up everything. And, and they're starting new again. And for, for Activision to kind of think that this is, this is going to recapture the magic, uh, it's insane. So if, uh, that, that's going to hurt. If anything, I could see the want to modernize Blizzard products and also their fan base. Yeah. I can see that attempt. Mm -hmm. But because of the prestige that that company has, the amount of clout that they have built in the hearts of the game developer or the gamers that support their products. Are you still focused? Do you wanna, I can put mine in the middle. If it's okay. No, 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 no. I'm just testing mine. Okay. Yeah, just go ahead. Sorry. To, to think about those people feeling alienated because it's like, oh, the new model is being ushered in. They're not going to continue to release patches or support for my model. It's that kind of a feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Where they're like, I love Blizzard PC games. This has been a part of my life since Warcraft 1. Like, I still I have Sally Shears tattooed on my shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, glittering. Pro like, old school people mm -hmm. still enjoying the product, still enjoying Blizzard lore, still enjoying Blizzard gameplay. Yeah are going to feel like, oh, man, loot box everything, microtrans everything, instant dopamine dump game mechanics everything. Nothing hard, nothing earned, nothing rewarded after, you know, vigorous challenges. Like, the things that used to be difficult are just going to be made, like, gotcha mechanic now. Uh, so I can see, like, there would be, like, resentment towards the company shifting that way. And all I think all Blizzard had to do was just really show that, like, look, no, we care about everything that we've done. We care about everyone that we have. But it is 2019. We do need to modernize our strategies. There's a lot less of these $30, $60 titles being bought. We have the data. And there's a lot more of these 99-cent titles or free-to-play titles being engaged with. We have the data. If you want us to keep doing these games that you love, we have to spread out how we make money. Yeah. You know, So I could see why Blizzard would want to modernize. But I think that there's a lot of people who thought they were being abandoned because the Diablo announcement was Diablo Mobile and not yeah. Diablo 4. Yeah. And it wasn't just so much, I think, it was Diablo Mobile. I think it was the tone deafness of the whole thing. <laughs> That's why people were yeah. upset. Yeah. You're at BlizzCon, and even if they just came out with a logo saying it's Diablo 4, it would have been a better outcome for them. Uh, but to make that center stage, to hype it up yeah. to a crowd of PC players is disrespectful, mm -hmm. man. And then to double down. To say that, do you guys not have phones? I, it, I think that was just a huge miss. I'm not going to put that on the company's shoulders. I think that that individual just kind of, that joke didn't land. You know what right. I mean? Like, it's he had a bad set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As Dave Chappelle says about Kramer. It was all frustration. Yeah. yeah, it was all yeah. bad. It was just all bad. Um, but, like, yeah, it's a change of guard. It is the end of an era. Yeah. The days where, you know, people can just make quality games. And I think I, I think it's unfair to say that they weren't trying to modernize. I mean, I feel with Overwatch and all all their Hearthstone, mm -hmm. they were approaching it with uh, with game design in mind, where it makes sense instead of forcing it. Right. It goes with Overwatch and Hearthstone are brand new. So yes. Like they reflect game design based on that era, yeah. not necessarily preconceived expectations of game design. Like for example. If you made a significant change to Diablo or a yeah. significant change to StarCraft, yeah. it's, a, it's a much different, I guess, 
you have people who are already expecting versus yeah. in Hearthstone and Overwatch you didn't. Right. Uh, I guess at least that. I have something interesting though to bring up that now that I'm thinking about it. How do you feel about potentially like because we are talking about evolving and staying modern. This guy was the chief of technology, right? Yeah. The CTO, chief technology technological officer or chief technology officer. Yeah. So when he started in the role that leaves him as the predominant expert of tech, we're talking floppy disks, yeah. you know what I mean? Four eighty sixes, you know, twenty eight dot eight modems. Right, right, right. Now we're and like hard drives that had eight hundred megabytes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And now we're talking, you know, like tech has come so far and so long over that period of time. I wonder if there's just fatigue on his part, which is like, man, you know what? In order for me to still maintain and be in this position, I have to stay current on so many things. I, you know, like it I could might be, be a little bit of that. that. I, I could see that. Um, I, I feel like a lot of the tech guys are usually who found themselves in those position, who who initially invested in that position, usually are really good with mm. keeping up because of that. it's a hobby for them to kind of sure. play around with tech on their own free turn. I, I do agree that, you know, there's a huge, there's definitely fatigue, right? Where that fatigue is attributed from uh, is up for discussion. Um, I, I think essentially why he left is mostly because yeah, all his friends are gone. Yeah. You know? And he started a company with just three people. They created this mega company with just three people. One's gone and one's staying, probably through contractual agreement. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. in a year from now that that guy will be gone too. Because, let's, you know, Activision, are, these guys, all three probably wanted to leave at the same time, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. They had those talks. They had those talks. Yeah, yeah. And so the fuck it talks. The fuck it talks. Fuck but Activision is like, hey, let's 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 yeah. face this out. Let let us have this transitional leave so that it doesn't become like, mm. you know, you blow up your company mm. basically that you built from the ground up. You don't want you guys don't want that. Right? Yeah. They probably came from that angle. So now they're peppering every six months. So I I believe the next six to eight months, the yeah, third so guy will uh, probably leave too. Yeah. Play the violins as the ship goes down. Yeah. You're a multimillionaire, right, Larry? Yeah. You built this company 28 years ago. Yep. What's holding you back if two of your friends are already gone? It's like, come on. You're yeah, already looking at happiness? their Instagram feed. They're on their boats, <laughs> right, enjoying life. And you're stuck here with, like, Activision telling you what to do. Telling you what to do, dude. Mm. Telling you what to do with your company. Yeah, I, I can feel that. Yeah, you don't want to stay around. Sorry, guys, it's been fun, but you're in better hands now. Plus 28 years, so let's imagine he was 30 yeah. when he started. Yeah. You add 28 years, 58. Yeah, that's a long time. That's a, that's a long time in the game industry. And I and we might be getting these dates wrong. And I'm not, you don't count the math from when, you know, the first game came out. But also consider there was development time before yeah. that. But whatever the amount of time that the company Silicon Synapse to Blizzard Entertainment to Activision Blizzard has been in existence. You have these people who were there since, since napkin sketches at Denny's. Yeah. Right? That is a long, that is a long time. A lot of game developers quit after five years, let alone yeah. making it 30-ish. Yeah. I mean, and the only time, uh, I mean, a lot of that is driven by egos, right? They want to make their brand, like, the best ever. They've achieved that, in my opinion, right? And to keep that going. And it's only, uh, they only show up because it's been fun. It's been yeah. fun hanging out and enjoying the success that they've built. But recently, in recent years... They weren't able to make the calls anymore. Yeah. You know, Activision says lay off 800 people by this date. They probably spend those months moping around, like quietly telling their favorite employees, like, hey, you should probably look for a job. <laughs> I mean, what a terrible yeah. period for them it must be as founders. You know, they're like, hey, I'm sorry. You know, I failed you guys. You got 800 people, dude. That is ginormous. That's a big layoff. Yeah, that's like three companies worth of people and to be to be fair just in case we don't have the facts because i know this was a while back was the entire 800 people from blizzard or was there it was across okay. but a good the, portion a good of them from blizzard yeah. like we're talking about 80 to 90 percent was from blizzard because they got rid of a lot of their marketing department yeah. like all of them yeah. and uh yeah hearthstone you know there's a huge controversy right now because uh hearthstone is looking for community managers when they laid off community managers, Ooh. and those guys are still looking for jobs. That and so there's, like, a whole Twitter, like, uh, fast, 
uh, Twitter fest with people saying, why don't you just hire the people you fired that are still looking for jobs? And it's just like, I'm a mother of four with special needs children. My husband just got laid off like in Tennessee. Why, why, don't, why don't you just rehire him? It's like there's a whole whole thread that's going on right now. So it's like that's really, really, interesting. really weird, right? So, let's, I mean, let's, we've been in the game for the scene. Yeah, yeah well, we've been at companies that lay off people and then looking for those same positions later. So what? I, I got to rewind and think about why, why that is the case. Are they looking for the lower salary people? in those situations or are they just figured out hey we do need people i will say it usually depends on whatever circumstance right so like there we have to acknowledge that different people get laid off for different reasons yada yada so uh a company makes a big layoff and let's say they hire like or they lay off community developers they lay off animators and you know lots of people let's say a couple months pass they're in a new quarter they did the layoff like december financial projections look a little different you know uh and now they're like okay so we still have that need for all those spots Hiring back those same people, the only thing I could think of as to why that might be a difficulty is maybe they feel like people might be disgruntled for like having to bite the bullet for four, five, six, seven months on their own dime. Mm-hmm. And then Blizzard's be like, welcome to the family. And like yeah. the Kool-Aid doesn't work the second time. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so, so, yeah. That's, that's, that's one thing I can think of. I it's guess, true. Like, it's true. Like a lot of um, kind of just um, – reshaping the company is just getting rid of the toxic people mm-hmm. it's true like uh, especially when new management comes in mm-hmm. they have these interviews uh where they kind of talk about your problems yeah. right but it's more really trying to suss out yeah. you Snitch as a problem yourself, please yeah it's true yeah so like uh, when man if you ever been at these game development studios and there's you're going through a management change the process usually your lead, new lead, mm-hmm. right, comes in and like, hey, we're going to schedule one-on-ones mm-hmm. and we're going to get down to the problem. We're going to fix this problem. Uh, starting with you on guys. On his half of the sheet, are you the problem? Yeah, yes, exactly. No. That's <laughs> what they're sussing out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure, like, um, the sentiment at Blizzard is like, yeah, I just feel like everything's changing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not sure about these changes. I, I don't like it. We're monetizing instead of just making the game good first. Yeah. So they figured maybe when it comes to community manager or whatever positions they laid off, it's just like, hey, we just got to get rid, rid of the negativity. If you get new blood in, you have an opportunity for a new culture. You have an opportunity for people who haven't been affected by whatever the bad thing was that yes. came sweeping through yeah. the first time around. They probably don't come to work with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. And it's it's sad to say these things, but you know, I could understand that, like, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, I'm sure that plays a factor in this. Yeah. We don't know. This is all speculative. Yeah. But for them to fire this position and then rehire also could mean that, you know, uh, they were just trying to look good for that quarter mm-hmm. and be like, hey, let's get rid of all this money, restart next next yeah. quarter uh, fresh, and we'll just hire back. And again, it's disrespecting yeah. the, ex- the people. The expendability that I see a lot of the big studios – kind of attaching to people yeah as if it's like a fax machine yeah like that's not a that's not a person designer that's yeah. a, that's a that's a tick on the next i wouldn't sheet. write that on, you know just get rid of that tick. yeah I, I think that's a very activision yeah. thing to do it's yeah. like hey we need to for this quarterly call you know we need to boost up our investment so let's get rid of these uh jobs that don't matter as much because that's kind of that's i forgot who said it but during that whole 800 people layoff, they were, it was probably through their press. It's like, oh, these are non-game devs as a way to kind of undermine. Like soften the blow. Soften the blow. Yeah, they, they said that they were, remember yeah, that yeah. little, yeah, like they're, they're not game devs. They're marketing and yeah. and um, like community managers. Yeah. This, isn't, this isn't the new fax machine. This yeah. is the old fax machine. Exactly. So the, it's not in, a person. to play into that type yeah, of yeah. thinking. They probably did just lay off these people thinking that, hey, we'll, we'll just rehire. Who wouldn't want to work for Blizzard? We can get rid of them and probably get someone for cheaper. Yeah, I've, I see a so lot we'll of that more money. on top-level studios as well. The, like, that attitude of, like, you should be happy, you should be thankful for X opportunity or to be able to. And so if you're not going to come here and let us take advantage of you, we don't want to work with you. Yeah. I really wish it, it was still, like, mutual benefit. Like, yeah. I can't tell you how much mutual benefit helps Right? It helps the industry, it helps the employee, it helps the employer. Yeah. I'm getting $100,000 worth of work out of you. Guess what? I'm giving you $100,000. Mm-hmm. You'll be so happy and I'll be so happy. Mm-hmm. When, that, when that starts to skew, that's when, that's when things go awry. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting 100 ks worth of work and you're giving me 60 mm-hmm. Or 
you're expecting 100k's worth of salary and you're getting 60. You know what I mean? It's that's when really that's when you start to see problems. And if you keep thinking that like ah, oh, but there's so many people who just want to be part of this company, we can just churn and eat through and spit out all these developers. Yeah. Hurts your reputation, hurts the talent pool, hurts the industry. Hurts the founder's feelings. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially, there's so much going on in the last year and a half. We've gone from game developers dying to work at Blizzard sure. to, I'm not so sure what's going on over there. Maybe I should sit back on this one and see how it plays out. Yeah. So many of our friends are like that, that yeah. I've talked to. It's like, yeah, man. They were, especially if you want to live in Orange County, they are the company in Orange yeah. County, right? But right now it's like, what is going on over there? Yeah. Is it that bad? You know, it's very hard to. Uh, it's they're, they're, It's funny that Riot and Blizzard mm -hmm. is kind of going through similar. Thing. Well, somewhat similar. Sure, right? Riot's sure. grabbing ass. <laughs> and Blizzard is like you know firing asses. <laughs> asses are involved. In asses cases. are involved in both instances. But these are the megaliths. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Blizzard to me has always been that like man. You know, get your resume up and then go apply there so that you can have your like 15 year career. Yeah. kind of wane and, and come to its end yeah like i always i always thought that as a game developer that was paid to make games by some sort of boss mm -hmm. or some sort of employment entity that blizzard was going to be the place that i like had the twilight of my career like yeah. the last my senior to creative director years or whatever yeah. was going to be there and i not a, there's a lot of people who felt the same way who mm -hmm. look at orange county or who look at blizzard as like i'm going to go there yeah. and i'm going to be there for 15 years and then probably call it quits yeah they just had this whole plan yeah and I'm, I'm feeling less and less of that kind of sentiment, sadly. And that's when I started noticing the shift myself or even seeing my friends who were like, man, you got the, you got that gig. Yeah. It's like, what? You're, you're leaving? You're yeah. thinking about going? Yeah. Why? Yeah. You know, before all the news came out, that was my attitude. And yeah. now I'm like, oh, shit. Morheim left. Yeah. If he don't believe, you know, yeah, if, yeah, he, yeah. if he isn't, if he isn't drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Serving the Kool-Aid, something's got to be, yeah. So that's yeah, what I started a, to notice. It, yeah, it's it's a domino effect that's happening. Uh, I'm sure all three co-founders wanted to leave at the same time, but Activision, this is all speculative, yeah. right? But if I'm one we of three co-founders and we're friends and been friends for 30 years building this mega company, mm -hmm. I'll probably think, it's like, I don't, I don't like the shit's going on. You're leaving? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to stay there if you're leaving. Yeah. They probably went up to them and said, all right, let's just do this. Could you imagine respectfully could, every eight months? Could you imagine being rich enough to like quit your job just on principle? Yeah. And again, I will say there's a lot of people who it doesn't matter how rich they are that they would or wouldn't quit their job on principle. But I'm just I'm trying to make a joke that like they did what? what? Me too. I'm out. Yeah. I mean, like that's. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a founder. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's not just one person. If you are involved in the game development scene, you've been you probably been seeing a lot of developers leaving Blizzard. Yeah. Which is crazy because it's like a minefield out there <laughs> to leave a somewhat pretty stable job uh, in Orange County, of all places, uh, to feel again is a huge risk, especially with what's going on right now. When do you jump out of the lifeboat? Exactly. When the water's safer. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Yeah, so there, the... are, there's a shakeup going on at Blizzard that we're all worried about because... Yeah. Larry and I both share this, and we want Blizzard to live on and be oh, yeah. happy because it's a great place for developers when they do perform well, right? They're, they're one of the reasons why California, especially our area of Southern California, is such a hot spot for talent. Uh, and if you look at the trickle-down economics of yeah. game development employee pools, yeah. Yeah. them being such a big attractor, regardless of somebody going there or leaving there, yeah. right? If someone comes in and moves and like works at Blizzard, and then after eight years, they're like, okay, I'm a senior and I'm leaving, all of the surrounding studios have access to better talent, right? Yes. Because they're such a magnifier yes. of bringing people into the it's boom It's a lot area. easier of a pitch. So they really help game development as yeah. a whole in this area. Exactly. So, of course, like I want to see them succeed for economic reasons, for health of my industry reasons, but then also just selfish personal reasons. I play more of their games and put more time and money into their games than any, any other, other one, two, or three companies combined. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. I don't that, want that to go to waste. And that's why people are so outraged, because yeah. a lot of people do care about what's going on at Blizzard and hope everything is okay. Like, people who are, uh, you know, even Blizzard itself are, like, uh, uh, complaining about the backlash that they got from Diablo. It's like, 
clearly that was an indicator of you not being in touch. Like, you should be happy that you have so many fans who care about your product, which they are, right? right? right. But they were selfishly, like, trying to push their own agenda where they're kind of ignoring mm -hmm. everybody else's feelings. It's more like, oh, wow, okay, our hardcore audience at BlizzCon. Sure. Of all places, of course, that is where they would get the most backlash. These are the most hardcore, of course. These people bought hotels. <laughs> hotels, crazy tickets. And dedicated like three plus yeah. days, right? So they, they paid for a just lot to blizzard yeah. things. Yeah. And it's a huge event in Anaheim. And so, yes, that is your first line of uh, offense. <laughs> I'll, when you, you do announce it, you anything. can't be mad about feedback though, because yeah. feedback is a reflection of an investment of some kind, yeah. right? Like if someone if someone doesn't care about you, they're not going to take the time to even complain. Yeah. Because what does it give them any good or, or benefit to help you get better? Yes. Right. Feedback is like, man, I want this to be better, or like I have an opinion that I think will help, or mm -hmm. even if it's hate. It's because they're invested, at least in some way. Yeah. Like something has touched them or affected them that they need to share yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Now, if I'm Blizzard, I would not complain that people, even if it was hate, like, man, this sucks that you did this to us, right? As long as it was constructively based and not like actual, like, kill people who made this decision. Because yeah, like, yeah, sometimes yeah. fans and people Inciting on the internet go violence, yeah. way too far with way their comments far, yeah. or with the things that they say. But even if you're like, man, look, this is bullshit. F you for what you're doing to us. Like, even if it was that level of vitriol, you still have to, like, be a company and respect the fact that these people are sharing with you how they feel about what you've done, yeah. right? Because they don't owe you their money, right? It's like a, it's like a negotiation. It's like, hey, I've got this. Do you want this? Yeah. And the person says yes or no, yeah. right? You, they don't owe you the money. Yeah. They, they're not – just because they bought from you before doesn't mean that they're tied to you. doesn't mean that they're always going to be in your pocket to just, oh, you can do no wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? You always have to respect the fact that the consumers can put their money elsewhere yes. at any time. Yes, and it's not like to adhere to every complaint. Mm. This was overwhelmingly yeah. like, what are you doing? Yeah. And most of the people that I talked to is like, who are very – invested in Diablo. I asked him what was going what was the main issue? It's like, don't announce it there. Yeah. Like make it a, a back of the page kind of announcement. But they made it the main announcement of Diablo, which is again the tone deafness of the whole thing. Yeah. Which angered people. It's like you don't get us. Like you used to get us. What's going on? I th I'll say this. If I was I personally don't feel like it was bad to announce Diablo Mobile at BlizzCon. I think that that's actually a great stage. You have all these people here right. who want to see Blizzard right. and what you guys are up to. Yeah. That's something that you're up to. Last but five I, minutes. Yeah, I also, I think that it kind of shit on people who are expecting to hear like a big Diablo announcement. Because this is BlizzCon where you look for the like, Scoops. this is like all oh, the new glimpse of the new WoW expansion. Or what's yeah. happening with Heroes of the Storm 2.0 or what's. Yeah. You know what the future of world of uh, like StarCraft is going to be? Are are they making that new MMO, Diablo Mobile? Like, yeah, you know? <laughs> like it's it was... the the weight of that being the biggest news for Diablo is a huge letdown. It is a letdown. Because, it is a huge yeah. letdown. Yeah, you're 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 making something basically for the Chinese market. <laughs> yeah, and then, right, but I think. Having understanding that, like, hey, people want to know the big Diablo experience, they should have came with more. Uh, they could have came with a logo, art, sound, and sound, like promises, stuff like that, and something. promises yeah, would have been a lot better. Something. And be like, oh yeah, if you like Diablo, we're expanding the mobile yeah. and spend like five minutes on it, right? Yeah. Here's a trailer. Right. No one would have been that upset with that. No, I think I got one. Yeah, it's, it's, People like, know Diablo 4 is coming. Diablo 3 has done too well for them not to try to do Yeah, everyone knows they're Everyone working. has already forgiven the day one login server crash issue. Like, yes. all the bad stuff that happened with Diablo, people have long since forgiven. Mm -hmm. People love the, the followers that I see who are, like, diehard about Diablo. Yeah. Love the content now. Love being able to go, excuse me, through the game with new characters, hardcore mode, dying, like, oh, got to start over. Like, all the little things that I see people enjoying about Diablo, I still think make it a great game that could be updated once again. Mm -hmm. um, that click, that click, 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 hyper click play, yeah. it works on mobile. So I don't, I don't hate Blizzard for even trying to no, explore that way. As a businessman, it makes sense. That's yeah. the, that is the best game in line for a mobile experience. Yeah. Move your character and touch stuff. Yeah. Do this all day. That's every mobile game yeah, I pretty yeah, much yeah. ever played more yeah. or less. So 
I don't blame them for what they did. I just think that the unraveling of what they were doing just the needed a little more finesse. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And that's why people leave. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh, in, yeah, I, I don't think the news will get any better for Blizzard. Um, the thing that we've been fearing for a long time is happening. Uh, I'm prophesizing in the next eight months we're going to hear about the third co-founder leaving. And, uh, I don't even know the, I don't know who's left. I know, like, um, Metzen, I don't remember if he was co-founder or not. I know he's, like, OG and, like, Samwise, the original, I think he was, like, the original art director on World of or Warcraft 1. Yeah. Well, there's one left. I don't, but I mean, like, yeah. I think those guys are, like, original employees, but I don't recall who the three founders were. So oh, since we're the third guy. <laughs> I, I That's know, why he's I leaving know. last. <laughs> Least impact. Yeah. No one knows you. Just kind of exit back door. But, uh. Yeah, well, the, there's a culture change, there's a shift change, it is the end of an era. Um, the next, if this is the Activision brain, right? <laughs> Overwatch 2, 3, <laughs> yearly releases. I have no idea what this looks like, but if we look at the track record of what Activision does with their franchises, Blizzard has been unscathed. That's about to change. Overwatch every year. Bro, I'll yeah, they say can that turn that Overwatch into the Call of Duty because obviously that's what they're doing, right? I think the games that's what they're running. The with. games of service model for Overwatch, I think it works really well. Slowly roll out new characters, mobile style. But they they're doing a two and three. It already been somewhat announced. That two and three. What they're working on. I heard on that they're working two. on Overwatch two, and that my, already is I'm like. S- I'm scared to see how steps. the rollout works from Overwatch one to two because Overwatch is so fan supported so lore and character identifiable yeah. that to like make a two right like when you think when you think of a launch title it's usually like a soft like all right cool we'll get 15 characters in there to start and then we're gonna like slowly unroll or expand i would really hate to see them like go back to that like all right we here are our initial eight and yeah. we promise we'll get those other characters that you know and love back in the game what's there to look forward to yeah. like i'm not excited as much about the second coming of you know Hanzo versus the first coming of somebody new. Do you want graphical updates? Oh, of course. Mostly with sequels, and uh, Overwatch has that timeless style. Yeah. Where you don't need that. It's like Team Fortress. Like I think I could load up Team Fortress Two right now and still enjoy myself. Yeah, like, exactly. And I wouldn't complain so about the graphics. There too has to be. Uh, it's gonna be very hard to convince me that the sequel is justified. It's gonna be interesting to see. I will say this: I think the gameplay and the visuals of Overwatch stand the test of time, in my opinion. I think that it's definitely one of those games that I can come back to 15 years from now and be like, "Man, it still holds up." Yeah. Because what they offer is like they get to the essentials. It's yeah. just fun. It's frantic. It's fast, and it works. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, I will say this though, selfishly, if a World of Warcraft 2 came out, I'd be all over it. I, I would love to see oh, wow, a, smaller, <laughs> a smaller, more concise, but huge visual upgrade, yeah. gameplay upgrade version yeah. of World of Warcraft. Fuck, I, I'm sorry, man. You, No one would know where I was for about <laughs> three years straight. Well, Activision <laughs> might be on your side for this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the, wow, too. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. If there Super was a wow. graphical up, like if there was a modern, like a 2021 version of World of Warcraft, yeah. I promise you, you will not. I'm gone. Yeah. It's over for me. Yeah. People are wrong, call my parents. Just on. let them know. We'll call my mom. They're betting on it, let right? So, uh, there you have it. Uh, thank you for joining us on Twitch Live every day at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Twitch.tv forward slash blue underscore champs. If you're watching this after the fact, thank you for watching us on YouTube.com forward slash blue champs. Supporting us on Patreon.com forward slash blue champs. Uh, any dollars count towards making this an audio podcast form and then uh you can just directly support us on our twitch prime subscribe subscription to get any of these videos and shows directly after the fact you don't have to wait uh that ends today's episode uh we are gonna follow this up with the visible <laughs> invisible walls real quick and uh talking about breakthrough so uh Hang on tight if you're already with us. We'll be back in about five to ten minutes. Bye, guys. We'll see yourselves recapped.